Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. And thank you to one of my loyal subscribers for sending it in. I really love this integral. I solved it a little differently than the solution method that he used, but comment down below what approach you took to tackle this integral. So we have the definite integral from one over the square root of two to one of sine inverse of x over x cubed dx. Pause the video so you can try it on your own first. I'm going to jump right in, starting things off by making a substitution. So I'm going to let t equal sine inverse of x. And I chose t instead of u because I had a feeling like we're going to do some biparts pretty soon. Now, don't differentiate both sides right away. It's going to be a mess. So instead, I can rewrite this as sine of t is equal to x. And then now we can go ahead and differentiate so we can figure out what dx is in terms of dt. Or t. So derivative of the left hand side cosine t dt and then derivative of the right hand side dx. Now we need to change our limits of integration. Currently they belong to the integral of the variable which is x. So I'm going to come here substitute them in for x and find out what the new limits are in terms of t. So t of the lower limit 1 over rad 2 would be sine inverse 1 over rad 2 which is very good, pi over 4. I already loved this problem because I was like, oh, I can make sure my students know trick. And then t of 1, sine inverse of 1, which is pi over 2. So now we're ready to rewrite the entire integral all in terms of t. So we have definite integral now from pi over 4 to pi over 2. Sine inverse of x, remember we're replacing that with t, okay? over and then instead of x cubed in the denominator I'm going to have sine of t cubed. I'm going to write it like this sine cubed t and then dx gets replaced with that's right cosine t dt. How are we doing? Okay at this point What's jumping out at me is we need to do integration by parts because we basically have trig functions and a polynomial, a not exciting polynomial, but it is one. And in order to basically get this guy out of the picture, we need to use integration by parts. So I'm going to let u be t and then dv would be the rest of the stuff, the trig stuff, which is cosine t over sine cubed t dt. So finding du is easy, that's just dt, but to find v, maybe you need to do a little side problem, or maybe not, depending on where you're at in your math career, maybe you could do that anti-differentiation in your head. But say you can't, let's just work it out, and this is where you have a couple options. So cosine t over sine cubed t dt, you could rewrite this using different trig functions, or you could just go ahead and make a substitution now. I already used up u for by parts. I already used up t. So I'm going to let y be just sine t. Why did I pick that? Because you see how I have plain old cosine t to the first dt. My goal is in this substitution right here to have cosine t dt get absorbed in the dy. So that's why you wouldn't want to make y sine cubed. Then when you find the derivative you'd have to do the chain rule and it wouldn't match up perfectly. So just plain old sine t, then dy would be cosine t dt, which is exactly what I see up there, perfect, perfect. So then we have integral dy over y cubed, perfect. Then rewrite this, this is y to the negative third dy, so far so good. How do we take the antiderivative? Add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, okay? plus c. And then who was y? y was sine t. So this is sine t to the negative second, which is the same as 1 over sine squared t. So we could write this as negative 1 half cosecant squared t plus c. So what does that mean for us? It means this negative 1 half cosecant squared t goes right here for v for our by parts. We have the following. So we'll have it u times v, like so. So that'll be negative 1 half t 
cosecant squared t. Now that's not in an integral, right? That's going to get evaluated from pi over 4 to pi over 2 minus the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of v du. Well, that'll be negative 1 half times cosecant squared t dt. That'll switch this to positive 1 half cosecant squared t dt. Good? Okay, and then you go, do we know this antiderivative? Antiderivative of cosecant squared? Just think, do I know the antiderivative of secant squared t? Oh yeah, it's tangent t. So the co-functions, it matches up the same way, they just always have negatives. So it'll be negative cotangent t. Very good, look at you. Okay, so this is negative one-half t cosecant squared t. And then I'm going to pick up a minus sign now in the antiderivative minus one half cotangent t. And then now all of this will get evaluated from pi over four to pi over two. You could evaluate it like this. What I think is nicer is why don't we just factor out this negative one half. So t cosecant squared t plus cotangent t pi over four to pi over two. See that? Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Okay. And then now it's just a matter of, can you evaluate it? So we have pi over two times cosecant pi over two squared plus cotangent pi over two, that's the upper limit, minus pi over four times cosecant of pi over four squared plus cotangent pi over four, that's the lower limit. Okay, here we go. So that stays pi over 2, cosecant of pi over 2, just 1, so if 1 squared is 1. Cotangent of pi over 2, that's 0. Then we have minus pi over 4 times cosecant of pi over 4 is rad 2, and then that's squared, plus cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. So now we have negative 1 half times pi over 2 times 1 squared plus 0 minus, now be careful, this is going to give me positive 2 in the numerator times pi over 4, that'll just make it pi over 2 when I reduce, minus 1, because that minus has to distribute, don't miss that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So you see these cancel, goodbye, goodbye, and then we have negative 1 half times negative 1, which is positive 1 half. Voila, that was gorgeous. I should probably put this on uh, one of my Calc 2 exams coming up this fall. What do you think? I'll practice it with them, perhaps. We'll see. Okay, so let me know in the comments down below if you took a different approach. I'm sure there's a variety of ways to tackle this integral, but it was really lovely. So thank you again so much to my subscriber who sent it in. And if you guys need to review any of your integration techniques or brush up on topics, or if you're prepping for your fall classes that are going to start, check out all the playlists on my YouTube channel. I have everything organized by course and topic ranging from intermediate algebra, trig, pre-calc, through calc 1, 2, 3, differential equations, some linear algebra. I got so much stuff on there. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok, math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye, guys.